We are professionals. Like, this, is, this is a professional podcast. Yes. Breaking that and better for song. Hello there. <laughs> Which actually did you this get is me a hat a as bit, well? Um. Yes. So I've got Dune Cam. <laughs> it's just a camera <laughs> with my Dune Steelbook. Welcome back to the Quiet Onset podcast, powered by Cinnamon. Today we're talking about the Sandman. Uh, the Netflix 10 episode series based on the comic books by Neil Gaiman. We just both are coming off a binge of The yep. Sandman, the 10 episodes. I finished it 30 minutes and, ago. And uh, literally right before we started this recording. And I think uh, let's not waste any more time and just uh, jump into this review, which uh, will be uh, as it releases on the day that the series actually releases uh, mostly a non spoiler review. Um, there will be time codes below, but and we'll also also give a verbal spoiler warning again at the end of the show we'll talk a bit uh, about season two and maybe some of the endings um but uh, we'll avoid the big spoilers regardless so uh, you'll be safe here for now if you just want to figure out if uh, this show is worth seeing and i guess let's kick it off with that question Lachlan. do you think the sandman is uh, a show that people should go seek out and watch yeah i reckon they should i think it's a fun time it's an enjoyable experience uh, there are a number of issues that I have with the series from a structural yeah. standpoint, but if I'm totally honest, I was driving today and my girlfriend goes, are you enjoying the Sandman? And I'm like, yes. And she goes, well, it seems like it's right up your alley. And to be honest, it, it kind of is right up my mm -hmm. alley. I do enjoy this kind of dark fantasy based on mythology stories and i really enjoy neil gaiman's work so yeah for me this was a, a an enjoyable experience yeah i think uh, i would kind of tag along to that and to me it was uh, a little bit less up like my wheelhouse of what i usually watch and what i enjoy i'm not that big into fantasy but i was really pleasantly surprised by the sandman uh, i agree with some structural issues and we can get into those uh without spoiling um the story i guess too much but uh um i think it just kind of rushes some things and that's usually uh, the biggest concern I had with it. I think it has a lot of really fun characters that it gets to play with because it has like those stereotypes of like the grand, uh, the grand stories and uh, gods and stuff that it can just kind of name drop and then introduce and give a lot of character to like right from the get go. And it also plays with, with like these interesting powers that it displays. But um, to me, the overall highlight of the show was just the look of it that didn't feel like uh i don't know it's it's really hard to nail a fantasy look that's just kind of off and establishes a well-rounded coherent world and i think the sandman does a great job of never really making me question the world that we're in it's just like really visually pleasing to look at and yeah what did you think about the look of the show uh i thought for myself the Everything seems a bit glossy and, and fantastic in a, mm -hmm. in, in a way. Uh, for me, it was mainly the designs of each world and set. Uh, for me, that was just spot on the way that... Because you go through a number of different realms in here. The Dreaming, which is the main one, goes through a massive evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not really a spoiler yeah. to explain what happens to Dream because you, this is known <laughs> if you've read the comics or if you have even looked at the trailer he's captured at one point and then he, obviously it's about his yep. revenge and his coming back into his kingdom essentially that's pretty much the story we have this mm -hmm. season and and the dream realm goes through an evolution of looking fantastic to looking trash back to looking fantastic uh and it goes through a bunch of different looks and i think for me I, the, my favorite one was the uh desire and um uh what is it what uh, oh yeah despair, despair. desire, desire and, despair. and despair their yeah. their realm was <laughs> that red, red room. room and i was like this looks sick yeah um and again mm -hmm. same with hell hell had this really awesome look to it especially as you enter hell there's mm. a bunch of arms reaching out uh and it's pr i think it's done practically as well so ev everything just looks yeah spot on now unfortunately i have not read any of the comics but it has got me very yeah. intrigued into reading them. So uh, I know that a mm -hmm. lot of the uh, 
scenes and shots in this uh, TV series, I'd basically just copied and pasted, sometimes a little bit different from the actual graphic novels. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, uh, I, I thought visually this was something completely different from the other couple of uh, bits of work that Neil Gaiman has done for TV, which for me, that would have been yeah. uh, Good Omens and uh american mm. god probably closer to like a hybrid between the two if if i have to say where it sits between them because american gods is extremely mm -hmm. dark and good omens is quite on the light-hearted side so uh, i would definitely say this sits yeah. kind of in the middle where it can look like it's a shot for a soap opera <laughs> and the next scene it's like a, a you know a dark <laughs> you know Stephen King, uh, demon esque, uh, movie scene kind of way. So mm -hmm. the easiest way to explain it. Uh, that's yeah. my opinion on the visual look <laughs> of Sandman. Great looking show. Uh, when it comes to the performances, a lot of um almost cameo like people come in and out. Uh, just having a few scenes, but uh, definitely at the center of it all is uh, Dream, uh, played by Tom, uh, Sturridge. So what do you make of of his performance? Uh, yeah, awesome. I think he did an incredible job. I, I Obviously, there's nothing to compare him to because I don't think there has been sort yeah. of a, a personification of Dream like this or, or Morpheus or this mm. character that I've seen before. So yeah. for me, he did a fantastic job. He was the perfect uh, emo edge lord boy I could have dreamed of essentially he did a fantastic he's, job yeah he's he really perfect for that role i think he's he's so stern about everything and uh i think overall his characterization is not really you know big uh because he doesn't do big things he really does everything subdued so when he goes for a progression uh it, overall in the series uh, I, I'm gonna honestly say I don't think like I I really feel it that well, but I think the character didn't need to grow yeah. that much. It was more that the plot needed him to grow a bit. Uh, but I don't think that's needed. You you can still have this like same character, but I think by the conditions of this of a TV series, you kind of need the character to at least evolve a tiny bit. Although here, I think he could stay exactly the same, and it would actually make it really interesting of like how other people have to adjust to him that he's like obviously not this uh just hero character but they're all uh layered and, and difficult to understand and have like all have different motivations for the stuff that they do dream as you said very stern with pretty much all of his dialogue delivery but when he wants to be he can put on a very mm -hmm. sweet little smile and you definitely see yeah. many different sides of dream and I think a key thing we should point out is in terms of the plot of this season, it seems to do contained-esque storyline in a way where each episode basically is its own little story, which I'm pretty sure each episode oh, is yes. based on a another run of uh, comics or novels in the Sandman series. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not like yeah. you're... Don't expect here... Uh, don't expect going into Sandman with it being an episode one to ten and it's telling one big story, which it, it kind of is. It is yeah. kind of telling the return of uh, the Sandman and Dream, but it's really these little mm -hmm. adventures that he goes on uh, that are... That sometimes stretch over one episode, yeah. right? But it's like, uh, you, you know, some of them just end... Uh, sooner than expected. Because there is a there me. is a big bad yeah. over the series, but there is also other big bads yeah. that come up every so often, and Dream's going to deal with mm -hmm. them. And it 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 is a bit, uh, I guess, disappointing at first, uh, especially because by them having so many small scale, in a way, small scale episodes where it's not the same characters each time, they are introducing us yeah. to a lot of people. Now I'm talking. Okay, so we've got Dream, we've got Lucifer, we have uh, uh, Joanna Constantine, we have uh, Desire, Despair, uh, there's Death in an episode, uh, you know, who mm -hmm. else do we have that comes in? Um, the Corinthian. The Corinthian, there's uh, Matthew, yeah. you've got uh, uh, Lucienne, <laughs> uh, you've got, like, uh, 
Ethel Cripps, you've got John D, you've got uh, mm. Gilbert in one episode. There's just there's uh, Cain and Abel, um, Hob Gadlin. Yeah. Like there are so many characters that they introduce this season that are maybe only in for one episode and one scene. But I've kind of seen that this season is more of a introduction to the world than an actual story. Yeah. Because we'll get to this closer mm-hmm. to the end of what they've done to maybe set up a season two, but they definitely do a lot yeah. of introduction uh, in this season because yeah. there's a lot of characters in this universe that I wanted to see more of. Um, and, and I would mm-hmm. say that most people get their own uh, arc and their own story, which is nice because there was more characters yeah. that I was interested Especially in. Especially the villains, I'd oh, say, sure. you know, get a bit more, right? 100%. Sometimes even get almost like the entire own episode. Yeah, and every every character is introduced incredibly well, and I would say that the casting is hammered on the head. It is perfect to a T, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I, again, mm-hmm. there's, there's certain aspects of it where I was like, this episode's over. Really, that's it. That's all I'm going to get. Because, uh, you know, yeah. really early on, you get to meet the fates. And that's a very Mm -hmm. famous uh, little bit of, uh, I guess, folklore uh, all around the world, essentially. Uh, And and Mm -hmm. it's a very interesting character. And they're in one episode, or it's in one episode, you know, they, them, she. uh, I don't know how to describe the fates. It's really hard when it's one is three and three is one or whatever it is. Uh, And then they pop up (laughs) once in a while. And it's like, oh, okay, but mm-hmm. I want more of it. It seems like this could be a pretty good big bad, but um, yeah, there's just there's just you want more of uh, Joanna Constantine. You want more of Cain and Abel. You want more of these little characters mm-hmm. that you get a little bit more of, and then you're like, okay, I've got to forget about them because they're introducing a new character now that is also excellent yeah. in many kinds of ways. So I guess there's the the good mm-hmm. and the bad of this of this series is that. You, there's all these really exciting characters, but they're kind of just mm-hmm. here they are and now they're gone and we might go revisit them sometime in the future. Yeah, it, it very much is in that vein of these creatures are all that old that they really don't care if like 100 years pass oh, yeah. before they see each other again. And I think it's really playing with that, you know, framework to tell the story of like, oh, yeah, we'll definitely see each other again. And uh, like the episodal stuff, I was thinking, uh, I haven't seen a lot of like episodic TV, but, uh, you know, I don't know why, but I thought of Supernatural where you have like the bad of maybe one, two or three episodes and then it moves on to the next arc. I think for a uh, 24 or 22 or 18 episode season, that makes a lot Mm. of sense. But for uh, 10, uh, 45 to 55 minute long installments of a show, uh, you just really want to get into like one uh, big arc. Or I wanted some things to continue, but maybe that's also, like you said, because the casting is so amazing that I didn't want to part ways with some of the characters that were introduced. I just wanted to get more mm. of them. Um, but but still, you know, the choice to give uh, some of uh, the characters that aren't our lead, uh, aren't Dream, um, just so much of an introduction and basically doing... Uh, like just uh, side stories essentially or just like introduction origin stories maybe even um, I think that worked really well in the show and that could really fall flat but it kind of worked for me like surprisingly uh, or well mm. um, we, we won't uh, get into like uh, specifics here but I think that uh, especially the backstory um, for uh, David for this uh, John D uh, character and that whole like diner episode uh is something that gonna has people talking oh, yeah. um oh yeah <laughs> as soon as the series drops i think that was a definite highlight uh, of the series and um yeah later on there's a certain convention that's also really iconic the uh yeah, sorry. that episode uh is basically mid-season and i really oh yeah really and i gotta say one more time really enjoy when TV series step away from, I guess, a main story 
and do mm-hmm. something else. And it can be a mixture of really good or really bad. It can go both ways. I do have good memories of Mr. Robot doing it in a good way and a bad way mm-hmm. sometimes. And that's one of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, but I, I was going to say, because mm-hmm. there, there is a way that you could separate almost this season into three little ones because it's basically yeah. uh, Dream reclaiming his tools, uh, learning what has yeah. happened to his realm, and then it's one last big hoorah, big bad. And it's kind of separated into an even yeah. three. Uh, and there, and obviously it takes a bit of time when you leave him getting all of his tools and he says he's going to fix the world into, I guess, this Mm -hmm. new setting. But this episode where uh, David Thewis is in it and it's just the diner scene. And basically I was like, man, this has gone for a long time, this scene. And it ends up being the whole episode. And I was just blown away by Mm -hmm. them deciding they're just going to do that instead. So it it, it is quite incredible. And I I would say it's, it's a very fun episode to watch you don't know where it's going to go and and for me it probably was my favorite episode of this season hands down yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i agreed that i think for me as well it it was just really solid all the way through um another character i really enjoyed was the corinthian yep uh just because he had this like weird creepy uh just i guess serial killer energy and uh, an escaped a nightmare out of uh, the dreaming um because essentially you know uh that the, the goal of of dream is right to reclaim his realm so he has to uh snatch up some of the uh, people or the nightmares not the people who got lost and i think that concept is uh you know something that is really useful for a plot because you got a bunch of loose cannons that uh you know affect the world and you can kind of introduce the character that way where you can see how he stabilizes the world and kind of through his absence see what his power is and also you know not really having a fine line of what his purpose is and him finding that as well was also super interesting something they can continue to explore uh so you know them finding the purpose these beings these these uh ethereal beings um, was also like really great. I like to me, um, one of the episodes I also really enjoyed was uh, the hundred year man. I won't say more than that. Uh, I think that was really a fun thing uh, to do as well. Uh, and the whole episode uh, where uh, Def, um, a, a a sibling of Dream, um, is is a bigger focus. I think I I really enjoyed that episode as well. Uh, yeah, episode six, the sound of her, her sound of sound of her wings, uh, episode where mm-hmm. you have a introduction of death in a very beautiful way, mm-hmm. and out of all of the introduction of his yeah. siblings, that was probably my favorite, and she was one of the, I guess, the most opposite of what she is. Where if you look at uh yeah. desire and despair, you look at them and you go. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. You look at Dream and you go, oh, yeah, Edgelord, that makes sense. Uh, on that episode, just want to make a note, mm-hmm. uh, I wrote <laughs> The Bread Man as a joke because he started off the episode by the bre- uh, yeah. peeling bread and giving it to pigeons. Uh, but also, he says vengeance. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, who is he trying to be? The Batman? Uh, because he said it in like a raspy voice. <laughs> So uh, that's all yeah. I have to say about that episode. <laughs> he also has the Robert Pattinson oh, has look down. Robert Pattinson look tall, down. And... tall, lanky, and yeah. slender figure. So well, I guess Robert Pattinson isn't just uh, he, he's pretty. He's got now, pretty but, big. Uh, he, he, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I have <laughs> yeah. to say that that introduction to death was again excellent. I, I have to say it again because every single one of the characters was just introduced so well. Uh, maybe not as much as like the pumpkin head one. Cause I really was intrigued when I saw the pumpkin head the first time. And then he's going to just throw it in there. Um, which by the way, I'm pretty sure he's, <laughs> he's voiced by Mark Hamill as well, which is even more exciting. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's voiced by that, Mark Hamill. I didn't know that. That's, just double check that. Can you do funny. a fact check for me, Ewan? Can you fact check that for me? Yeah. Yeah. Fact, fact checking. Check. I will. Just doing a quick fact yeah, check. Yeah. Continue. Uh, yeah. 
uh, except he didn't really have an introduction, which sucked because I would have loved to seen the handyman of the dreaming. That sounds like a, such a fun episode where he's just going around and fixing shit. Uh, so yeah. for me, yeah. as in Charlie Day from Sunny, but it's just like a pumpkin Basically man, a pumpkin and he's just man. crazy. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. For me, that was uh, one character that didn't get the introduction I thought he deserved, but uh, I think if we if we quickly go through them. Lucifer is really fun as a character, and uh, in that entire episode, I guess you you pretty much spend the entire time in hell. And I was super excited yeah. for that fight, I guess, uh, to go down because yeah. there's a fight that roils, and it's, and it's not necessarily a fight per se, and it was really interesting no it was really interesting how they executed a sort of battle between two very powerful beings yeah to me i don't know why but it is yeah no we're not spoiling it but to me it felt like you know you are you are in a schoolyard and there's two kids who are just kind of like angry at each well, other and do you know like, how i you try know how to I, insult you know each how other i described it i thought. described it like rock no, paper you... scissors but then someone's like yeah. lava or some shit right <laughs> introduces yeah, new yeah, rules like, lava, dragon, dragon. <laughs> like that's what that entire scene was that's all it was rock paper yeah. scissors i find it really funny like yeah it's 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 quite ridiculous yeah. how that fight went down and i mean mm -hmm. sure it, it it was very beautiful and artistic, but I was wanting an actual fight at some point. Uh, it wasn't really, there wasn't yeah. really a lot of violence in this series at all, if I have to say so, except maybe the first episode is probably the most bloody of, oh, you know what? No, maybe not. Yeah. Um, but like, I guess it's conceptually gruesome. It's never it's just never, like, you know, bloody yeah, it's never just or emotionally. It can be quite, yes, it's always like layered in that sense. Uh, and I think um, the, the it, best example of that it. would be the convention, uh, which is excellently done because you're watching these characters and you're going, what are these people talking about? And then it evolves <laughs> to being this really yeah. fucked up situation. And I guess that's what I like about yeah. this show is that you, you're watching it and you're going, wow, that's extreme, especially the, the death episode. Uh, cause she goes around mm -hmm. doing her job while she's talking the dream and she's just taking these people and some people take it super lightly. Some people take it. And there's one particular character, I guess, in that, that's super depressing to see death taken. Yeah. And it's like the, yeah. e everything that's happening in this show is so well thought out and executed. So there's just a, 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 a lot of care has been taken into crafting this story, which makes it uh yeah. again a very exciting show to watch uh yeah. and you you just feel like you don't need to know every single backstory because it does a, an excellent job of telling mm -hmm. you what you need to know at that point in time yes i i also didn't know at start that it was Cain and Abel uh, oh right <laughs> and um you know they play a visual gag there that was, well if you know the Cain and Abel story then I guess it's you know not surprising but uh to me it was because I didn't know that those were the two characters that we just got mm. to see and uh I just like there's also a surprising amount of humor in this it's you it, like obviously dark humor uh but it it, it just kind of works and it, it it like more often than not it doesn't uh, for for flat, uh, but uh, critiques. Do we have any critiques? Maybe we could get into. Well, I guess we already touched on the structure, but maybe more specifically, what what didn't work about that uh, structural framework? Okay, so yeah. I guess one of the things I don't enjoy about this series is how it's structured in the sense that each episode is almost like. Uh, its own contained thing. And I guess it can mm -hmm. work, which we said episode five as a contained story works incredibly well to develop this yeah. world into what it can be and what can be done with, I guess, the human brain and uh, dreams tools. There's also just the two, this is the story and that's it. 
and then a little bit of that story will evolve in. And I think the best part of this series is really the, I guess, the the start of a couple episodes because it kind of is Dream or Morpheus getting his tools back and the last couple of episodes mm-hmm. where it's uh, all linked together by this one vortex. And that's exciting. That yep. that is exciting, and that's uh, and it flows a bit mm. better. But you know, it's not it's not uh, you know why couldn't they go from episode one to episode ten having all of that? And 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 again, the the last couple episodes, the characters and they don't come out of nowhere because they are talked about in the first episode or two, and they are set up there and then, yeah. and they come back. But it's I think it's just too much jumping back to this character that they set up all the way back at the end to be here, to be the protagonist slash antagonist kind of situation. So it, it, it really could be, it could flow a bit better and it could be a bit more of a traditional arc from A to B, but not A to B to C. And then we're doing A to B to C again. And then we're doing A to B to C again. And yeah. then halfway through, throw this really artistic, fun episode in there as well, because God, that episode five was great. And if they could do more of that, man, this show could have been like, that could have been like the best show on TV at this point. If, if all episodes were like episode five. Yeah. That's one that you can do like once per season. I don't think like something like that works and you, you need to have a character that kind of works with that. But I guess having access to a lot of these like ethereal beings, you exa- exactly so take got this what into you a concept there. right so obviously that episode is how yeah. john uses the ruby how about we have yeah. joanna constantine used the sand or how mm. in what the previous episode right that, yes. or how yeah. or how blank used yeah. or the the demon used the helm in another episode in the hell episode so mm. why can't we have all of these things be like that where it's like he quickly, we have to set up Lucifer. So let's have one of the demons have the helm yeah. so that uh, Morpheus go down to uh, Lucifer's realm and you learn mm-hmm. how uh, an, like a, uh, one of those characters has, he can't be just walking into it. He can't sneak in. He has to be invited essentially. So, you know, there's doing some world building there. So yeah. there's, it does, there's all these like small things that really do help the show. But I guess the overall yeah. plot, is just too messy and flicking all over the place. And it's not from one perspective. Mm -hmm. It's from multiple, which can be a, I guess, a a pro, uh, like a, like a positive thing. And it can also be a negative thing, but if it was all just set from the perspective of Morpheus, then it probably could have flown a little bit better. Uh, Essentially you're talking about a a, a first uh, series, a first season that focuses more on Morpheus and his powers and him retrieving his trinkets, those three trinkets, you know, his helm, his sand and the ruby. And uh, essentially that I, uh, well, that's what I thought we would get in the season. Um, And then that's, that's plot line is just kind of then a, a bit more, ended a bit more abruptly uh than i think would would have worked better for the series as a whole uh but i haven't looked it up yet but i feel like this show must have had a quite a quite a big budget you know to to do all of the things they set out to do there's a lot of uh, effects work there's a lot of like world building and to go to a lot of places so like you said i think it also is an introduction to show hey this is how grand this world is please don't cancel us netflix we have more to show and with that they kind of rush through i'd say like two or three uh seasons worth of stories right in mm. one season and yeah it, it just feels rushed at places i'd still say it is very entertaining because like you can never stay on something for too long before they just move on um but to me like a lot of the concepts that were introduced in this uh well still had me thinking about them in my dreams <laughs> usually hopefully not nightmares but no i was thinking uh, after watching uh still still about the stuff that uh you know was uh, kind of touched on and um it's just a really interesting show and i hope i hope it sticks around uh for a season two 
Lachlan, I think uh, lastly, let's talk a bit about spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. We won't go into the plot or anything. We've hinted at it. If you've seen it, good. Let us know if what you want to see in the season two. But I want to know from you, Lachlan, uh, what do you want to see in season two of The Sandman? Obviously, they set up essentially a war between Hell and the rest of the realms, which is quite interesting. I'd like to see a more yeah. proactive Morpheus in the sense that I want to see mm -hmm. more of his powers come to uh, light. And in, in a way, mm -hmm. I would like to see more of a team up between him and some of the characters. I'd love to see like a a tag team. Yeah. Uh, Constantine, uh, Constantine, if you want to actually pronounce it. I think that's how you pronounce it, Constantine. Uh, Sandman Jiro team up. Taking like a Ghostbusters episode, essentially, wouldn't that be great? Uh, Sandman and yeah. Constantine, and I'd like to see just a bit more of some characters that unfortunately they're not coming back. <laughs> like, yes, like, I wanted to see more. <laughs> I wanted to see more of characters, yeah. but they're not coming back. So, I yep. guess the season two we are seeing uh, a war coming, and there are characters that we're going to see. I'd like to see another episode with um, Hob back in it uh, for the 100-year catch-up mm -hmm. or something like that, or if he just catches up with him on the every 10 years or so, that'd be nice. But for me, I'd like yeah. to see a more proactive and flowy season two. Where And I think that's pretty much what they've done. They're going, all right, cool, season one. We need the money that we want. We don't want to be – because, you know, it's mm -hmm. Netflix, right? They might just can the show next week. Uh they need to yeah, show... Yeah, because this is also from the time, from the productions that still had money, and Netflix doesn't have that. So there's, it's very likely, at this point, uh, a season two is not greenlit. The show is not out yet. Uh, we're about a week out from it releasing. So, you know, we'll see later on. If, they need uh, a successful we'll season, a season one. Two, sorry. So basically they went, let's do as yeah. much as we fucking can in this season to mm -hmm. show people that what we can do. And then season two, go back to the basics yeah. and actually do like a proper TV series. So yeah, that's what I want out mm -hmm. of season two. A, a more natural story telling and a more proactive Morpheus. Because I feel like, I feel like our boy can do a little bit more than just the, um, Emo goth lord. Yeah, and more of Gwendolyn Christie. Please, yes, she's uh, as a Lucifer. fantastic. She was amazing. Now, I think what uh what Morpheus uh learned by the end of the season is really his superior being not being the center of it all, like his arrogance or maybe uh being self sufficient, more relying on other people. I think that's where they try to arrive at. I don't think they did much in the season for him on a character arc to get there. Mm. I think that was just like conversations with the librarian that kind of forced us into that direction. But something he arrived at, and I can kind of feel like that was a good overall arching story is for him to realize that uh, he is um, there because he's he's serving the people, not the other way around. Um, and, you know, that's just then, I guess, for us, for us mortal humans, uh, and Watchers, more like he's a straight-up hero that goes up against the antithesis of, like, Lucifer and Hell. And, uh, you know, he wasn't that. And I think I think it was, in a sense, also an origin season of him to to be more of a hero character that certainly still has, like, layered flaws and whatever. Uh, but, but, yeah, I think it's going into that direction. And, Lachlan, uh, until season two comes out, I'll certainly be reading those... Uh, I think it's 75 issues of the main comic. Uh, I think it only ran for a couple of years. So I'll, I'll definitely be reading up on that and I'll keep my fingers crossed that we are getting uh, a season two of The Sandman. Yeah, okay, that's great. Then uh, let me know. Uh, so Lachlan, where do you arrive at as a rating for I'm The gonna Sandman give it season a... one? Wait, hang on. I haven't seen your rating and neither of us have written it down, so... This could this 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 should be uh, yeah this mine's should be, from the old this one. should be an excellent three two one situation where we go three two one it should we be... say our number are we doing it out of ten or out of five we're doing it uh, out of ten because it's a TV okay, show sure. so no it's right. more of the sure. IMB instead no of Letterbox right. Trading yeah go ahead okay yeah uh three two one seven seven out Eight. of ten oh wow excellent. we're the same excellent. okay well. 
I guess uh, it's it's closer to an eight than a uh, six. Uh, if I could, I would give it a seven and a half. Some really strong episodes in there, but overall, the uh, structural issues in the Sandman kind of hold it back from being that uh, grade A type of uh, TV show. Um, but that brings us to the end of our review of The Sandman. Uh, let us know if you've watched it and enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to get more of the Quiet On Set podcast and Luckland and myself, uh, there's, link below, uh, there's links below that will take you to our socials and a link tree to everything Quiet On Set. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe and uh, like this if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on an audio platform, uh, follow the show and uh, leave us a rating. And uh, Quiet On Set is powered by Cinnamon, hosted by myself, Jürgen Graf, and Lachlan Thiele. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you Monday.